how do you know in relationship that when you're being honest and opening up and telling your truth that you're actually speaking from your true self and you're not actually sabotaging the relationship with something that's creating space between you? A sabotage is a pattern that we do that creates conflict and creates space based on our own fear of intimacy from the past. And they run deep. They can be really hard to identify. They feel familiar and comfortable because we've actually been doing them our whole lives. They're patterns that keep getting us stuck in unhealthy relationship patterns. And they can ruin a relationship because they show up as rigid, unhealthy boundaries. So I'm gonna show you today how to know for sure that you are speaking from your true authentic self and you're not actually unintentionally sabotaging the relationship when you speak up. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'll show you how to read your body somatically so that you stay in your authentic truth in the moment and you don't get pulled off that into fear, which is generally when we start sabotaging. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Amy and I help women that struggle with insecurity and anxiety in relationships to awaken to their self-worth and heal their past so they can create an incredible relationship with themselves and with the partner they deserve. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified because I post new lessons like this every week. Before we begin today, I want to let you know that there are a few places on my calendar available to speak with me one-on-one -on -one for the Love by Design program. So stick around till the end of the video because I'll show you how to apply for that. Okay, so a sabotage is a really deeply ingrained pattern that we have in relationships. It's something that we do over and over again unawares. We've been doing it for a very long time. It feels very familiar and comfortable. And the quickest way to identify your sabotages is to look back at all of your relationships you've had and identify the patterns, how you always seem to start relationships and end them, how they make you feel, and what are those stories that you're telling yourself, particularly when you're in conflict. So a really common sabotage that we can have is we choose unavailable partners all the time. And in fact, they don't seem to be unavailable available at the time, but it turns out a few months down the line that they are actually unavailable. And if that's a pattern of yours, I want you to watch this video next on how to get out of that cycle. Another sabotage that we have, which I'll talk more about today, is where we create unnecessary conflict that ruptures the bond that we have with our partner. And the core root of this sabotage comes down to feelings of fear, guilt, and shame that actually originate in childhood. The feelings of fear come from this feeling that love has never really been safe for you. It's always come with some level of pain that's been then reinforced in your adult relationships. And the shame comes from because we never receive that unconditional love we crave. Therefore, there must be something inherently wrong with us. We personalize the reasons why we didn't receive love as a child. So we carry deep shame with us into our adult relationships. And we carry guilt with that because we do keep sabotaging relationships again and again. And we are reinforcing those beliefs that we that love comes with pain and that we're not actually worthy of love. Now, the core energies of fear, guilt and shame always come with core beliefs. They're stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves. And you might only just be starting to uncover these stories, but generally the core stories are that we're not worthy of love, that we're somehow broken in some way and that will never be fixed and that we just don't deserve the kind of love that we've always craved. Those beliefs, words, and the energies around them are lodged so deeply in our body that we actually feel uncomfortable when we come up against available healthy love. And when we do start to attract emotionally available people, we feel deeply uncomfortable on some level and we act from that place. And this is mostly unconscious. We start doing or saying things that start to rupture the bond because things are just getting too intimate for us. We're somehow expecting the pain to come at some point. So we push them away. Or like I mentioned earlier, we choose people who are only emotionally unavailable on a deep level. So we can never actually get to that point of intimacy with them. Therefore, they're safe. Now, this is all really deeply ingrained, so I want you to start learning how to identify these sabotages that you have in your life and where that energy comes from and your true energy when you're really expressing your true self and, and being emotionally available in relationship. Our true self is who we are underneath our layers of trying to chase love and get love and feeling unworthy of love. It's who we are preconditioning. It's who we are without any fear guilt or shame. Speaking from your truth comes from being in alignment with your integrity, setting healthy boundaries that actually are a bridge to the other person that actually increases intimacy between you. And at the same time, it's also 
really honoring and protecting what your truth and your reality is. Now, we're not always going to be in our true self. We will flicker between our fear and guilt and shame. We're not perfect as human beings, but the more we can gain awareness around these two types of energies within us, the more self-awareness and self-control we'll have when we're trying to express our needs and get them met in relationship. So how do we start uncovering when we're speaking from our real truth and integrity and alignment and when really deeply ingrained sabotages are coming up and forcing us uncontrollably to create distance and space in relationship? The key indicator comes from our body. When we're expressing anything, there are emotions that carry frequencies underneath them. And if we start to learn to uncover the emotion and the frequency underneath the belief and the story and the action and the boundary, that awareness can lead us to what part of us we're expressing from. So when we're speaking from our authentic self, we're expressing from emotions of love and joy and peace and freedom and these are all higher frequency emotions they all feel expanded in the body we feel grounded and we feel very open and light sometimes as opposed to speaking from our conditioned self or our sabotages which are fear guilt and shame they're lower frequency uh, energies and so when you're in that emotion you're going to feel contracted you're going to feel like you're armoring up um, and you're going to feel like there's something not quite right and you're not, you're certainly not in that expanded state. Just quickly now, I want you to visualize that you've just seen a really cute puppy or a baby and you just feel this sense of joy and beauty and you're lost in that moment. That expanded feeling in your body is who you truly are. That's your true self in love, in joy. As opposed to a memory you might have when someone said something horrible to you or done something really mean and your body kind of contracts and you're in maybe a shame spiral or you're feeling guilt. They are the low frequency emotions that come with fear, guilt and shame and sabotage. Start practicing the the difference in the way they feel in your body uh, and you're going to come up against a bit of confusion because we have our wires crossed a little bit with love because we've always experienced love to come with pain um, and to come with perhaps chaos if we have insecure attachment we've probably wired our bodies to experience love as pain so when you're in love you're actually in anxious attachment you're in anxiety you're in this kind of chasing mode um, and we do experience that thinking it's lust and chemicals and excitement and connection but it's actually anxiety which comes from fear so we need to lean into where our bodies are and start practicing the difference between the expanded state and the contracted state and the practice that will help you to to really reset your body is to practice feeling safe in this moment right now particularly if you carry trauma in your body learning how to self-soothe and to ground yourself in the moment is really important so let's put this into an example let's say you're in a new relationship and you're starting to set some boundaries around your time and your availability to them often when we have a new connection a new relationship we give all of our time to the person. You know, it's a really fun time of courting and we kind of go with the flow. But then we need to kind of come back to reality a little bit, get ourselves grounded again so that we don't get swept up and lose ourselves in it. And setting a healthy boundary at this time can also feel really uncomfortable if you're a people pleaser. If you're used to bending over backwards for someone, you might think setting a boundary is being overly dramatic uh, and that you're being too needy in expressing what is right for you. And so it's really important to have this kind of skill and self-awareness in the body so that you know you're not setting a rigid boundary that's overtly pushing them away, but you are speaking from your true self in setting a boundary that is going to help them to connect with you in a way that's right for you. So the first thing you need to do is identify what your need actually is, whether you would prefer to speak more over the phone rather than text. Whatever your need is in that moment, sit with it and identify what the emotion beneath that need is. What is it that's running it? How do you feel when you're in the reality of that boundary being respected? Is that emotion and that feeling that comes with your need being respected uh, a feeling of expansiveness and feeling respected and allowed and you belong in that container because that person's facilitating it? Or are you feeling fear when that boundary is being met? Are you afraid that they'll do something or say something and you need to somehow control the outcome? If that need is underpinned by any kind of emotion around fear, shame or guilt, 
you are trying to express a wounded boundary, a rigid boundary, and that is a sabotage. So I'm going to show you a simple technique that you can use to start testing scenarios and boundaries before you go about setting them with a person. Let's say your new person has asked to meet up with you on Friday night and you already had plans to meet up with your girlfriends. Your first response might be that you want to set a boundary to say that you're not available because you already had plans. And then your other side might come in thinking, ah, oh, you don't want to push them away because it's a new relationship. You want to be available for them. So we're going to test these scenarios to see where they're coming from and which one is a sabotage and which one is what you truly need. So let's take the initial belief uh, and story that we had, which is that we want to meet up with our girlfriends. That was our initial plan. And run it in your mind like a movie that you are saying no to your person um, and you're with your girlfriends. And just run it as a movie quickly or again and again in your mind. And as you're doing that, just notice the feeling that you have of connecting with your girlfriends, setting a boundary with your person. And then I want you to take the opposite of that scenario, which is where you did your plans with your girlfriends and you are you're available for that person again when they've asked you to. And I want you to run that story in your mind like a movie. And again, notice what feeling is coming up in your body. Now, you're going to flick back to the original and flick back to the alternate version of the movie as many times as you need to before you can identify which version makes you feel expanded and which one makes you feel contracted? One version makes you feel more peaceful, more truthful and more right for you. And the other one makes you feel that you're operating a little bit from fear or shame or neediness that's not in alignment for you. Now, this example might seem fairly obvious if you're used to setting boundaries. It's really important to keep connected with your social circle when you're dating someone new. Um, and I could feel that in my body straight away and you probably picked up on that. But try this technique out for times when you're a little bit confused about a scenario. Take the version that is your instinctual go-to, the boundary that you want to set, and then take the exact opposite of run and run them in your mind like a movie, one and then the other, and flick it back and forth and just notice the response from your body. This technique of flickering back and forth helps us build up body awareness. Our bodies carry an incredible intelligence about what is right for us, and we need to start learning how to trust our bodies instincts again. But again, as I said earlier, this comes back to really feeling safe and secure in your body as a resting state. So if you've had trauma in your life or any kind of complex PTSD, you might have learned to associate love with fear. You need to get back to learning when you feel expanded and peaceful and joyful and when you feel contracted and separating out the two and then running the scenarios of one and the other and identifying which one produces your expanded state and which one produces your your contracted state. And the more you practice this and the more you practice feeling safe in your body and feeling belonging in yourself without any need of people to do things around you or a need of getting validation from people around you, the stronger you will start to perceive your body's signals. The signals are there. We're just awakening to them and learning to listen to them more closely. So in this video, I've given you some steps to start learning your body's intelligence and start being able to listen to it so you can identify when you're in unhealthy patterns and when you're actually breaking new ground and speaking from your true authentic self. And if you want to learn more about my complete three-step methodology to become secure in yourself, in your relationship with yourself and in relationship with another, I want you to join me in my free training on the three steps to creating secure love. And the link for that training is in the description below. I also have a free Facebook group, which I'd love to see you in. The link for that is below as well. And if you'd like to have a free one-to-one -one strategy session with me for the Love by Design program, please click my calendar link in the description below. Find a time and submit your application for that below. And let me know if this video was helpful. Give me a comment below and let me know if you have any questions at all. I'd love to do a follow-up video if this was helpful. And please click the like button on this video so that more people can see this as well. It will really help this channel out. And for now, here are some next step videos that I mentioned in the lesson today for you to go watch to keep creating an incredible relationship with yourself that's secure and healthy and i will see you in the next video